Yo what up guys, so in today's video what I want to do is show you a digital forensics tool which is called PS Tools. Now this uh, tool is basically used in digital forensics to access or get certain information in the system. We have used in digital forensics in Windows 7, uh, which as you may think Windows 7 was a long long time ago. When I was, I don't know, 8 maybe? 8, 7, but I have used Windows 7. So that was many many years ago. About 14. So PS Tools is used, it's developed by Microsoft, so it's not virus, right? As you can see here, it's a no, it's not virus, first thing. It's used by viruses. So some of the eight firewalls may flag this. However, before you do anything, I suggest running this on a virtual machine just in case if you do any damage, because you certainly can. This is a powerful tool, right? As I said, it's a digital forensics, you can basically modify stuff and you can damage stuff so don't run this on your host computer have this on your pen drive if you have to right just in case and run it on a virtual machine you can download this from here it doesn't have any viruses as i said it might just get flagged up which is all you do is just whitelist it and it will download it to your computer um i should not get flagged up by windows defender though as you can see these are all the tools now um two of these tools might get deleted upon in uh, upon downloading from the website because the as i said it flags up but however all of these files are not virus uh, more virus they're not flagged up as viruses right so two of these files will be ps exec and ps kill why ps exec allows you to execute files and ps kill allows you to kill processes as you may think if it allows you to kill processes processes are basically anything in the system so it allows you to kill the firewall and if you kill the firewall you are a free person in the computer right so now, the first, uh, one of the most important thing is this runs on Windows 8, Windows 2012 server and nano server, whatever, I don't know what that is. Um, so client and server. Now, have you, as I said, I use this on Windows 7. However, for this showcase, I'm gonna be running on Windows 10. So this tool might not run perfectly, might, not, might, might get some errors, some of the tools might not work, which is just something we need to deal with. If you don't like this tool, you can always download another one, right? It's up to you. I'm just showing you the PS tools because it's a cool tool and it doesn't require any additional programs to run it. You can just download it on your, any Windows operating system. So once you download it, I already have downloaded it. Let me just show you PS tools here. You will get a zip file. All you do is get to here, extract all, extract. Close this, delete PS tools, zip file, put it on your desktop. Make sure it's on your desktop because you're gonna have a hard time finding it if you don't have it on your desktop. Now, you don't run it because when you run this, it will close itself. As you can see, we cannot do anything. Or well, we can do this, but it doesn't really interest us, right, in terms of this. So what we need to do is run CMD. Now do this while I'm doing CD desktop PS tools. That's it, right? You don't necessarily have to disable your firewall, as I said, if you have Windows Defender, because this is currently running. Um, so, what we do is DIR, direct, uh, directory. And as you can see, there's a lot of tools. And some of them has 64, some of them has, uh, some of them don't. Now, the difference between, I'm pretty sure this is for bits. So, PSExec will work on 32 bits and 60, uh, sorry, will work on 32. However, PS6, PSX64 will work on 32 and 64 because 64 bits is working on both computers, right? So if you have a 32 bit computer, LB, PSX most likely will work. And if you have a 64, everything will work. Both of these will work, right? I'm guessing that's for 64. I don't really have any idea what 60 else could stand for. I'm pretty sure it's for bits, right? That was usually is meaning of 64 at the end. So, um, what we can do is, P for the first thing I wanna show is like PS Info, right? It shows you some basic information of the computer, like the operating version, it shows you who's the registered owner, it doesn't show you anything because this is a virtual machine. It shows you the system root, which is the main drive of the system. Uh, this is like my, this is actually my processor, my host, this is your memory, RAM, your processor speed, your processors, and stuff like that. Just some of the basic information. What we can do is PS logged on, for example, and it will show us who's currently logged on. It shows you what time they have logged on. 
and it shows you the computer name, the hardware main name, and the user, which is me, right? It's this. This is spelled wrong, by the way. Um, what we can do is get PS gets ID, and it gets us this number, SID, the SID, for example, which can be used for later or whatever we need. Um, we could use PS info. Well, we used that, sorry. Uh, we could use PS list, which is shows us a file of processes, like I think it's called, I can't remember what the file is called, Linux. I think it's PS on Linux. Yeah, PS shows you processes on Linux, it's the same story. But this one is just PS list, right, processes. Now, what we can do is I want to show you a cool thing. What we can do is PS exec notepad. And as you can see, notepad has started. What we can do is press Ctrl C, PS kill, no sorry, PS list. And we need to look for notepad. As you can see, this is notepad. And what we need from notepad is the PID, this, the first column, the second column, sorry. The second column, look for the PID, take the number, and we can just PS kill and put the number in. As you can see, process 29080 killed, which means notepad. So basically you can play around with this tool. It's very, it's free. I think you should play around with it, right? PS password, I know that you probably saw PS password, PS shutdown. PS shutdown doesn't work because for, for whatever reason, I tried uh, disabling the reg registry, disabling the UAC, user access control. I'll try basically everything. The file was definitely off. I think it's just, as I said, Windows 10, it doesn't work perfectly. However, this PS Passport has worked on Windows 7 because I have done it before. I've done it months, months ago, right? So um, PS Ping is basically just, just a normal ping, right? PS Ping, nothing interesting. It allows you to check the connectivity between devices and or to the internet. What we can also do is, uh, as I said, PS Passport doesn't work. I was PS Service, let's say PS Service. You have to agree with stuff and oh, it just shows you basically the whole services, which is a big, big, big list, right? So let me just go on PS password. Let me just to show you, right? Uh, so as you can see, it shows us a file. However, when you try to change the file, the password, which I, if I'm not wrong, this is the right command because it says, I mean, this is definitely the command, right? So PS, PS password, you can do, I'm pretty sure you can do local host. Um, just put my name is sorry. I need to actually check what my username is. So we need to just go net user. As you can see, it shows us all the files, all the, and we can put like admin one to three. Now this would definitely work. However, as you can see, error changing access is denied. It just doesn't work. I think Windows Ten is just too secure, and it doesn't work. As also in the documentation, it says that Windows. It is sort of the latest version that it, this works on. So, right. hope you've enjoyed this video. That's to be honest, it. I it's just a quick showcase of the tool because not many know how to like run this or how to use it or what is this for. So I just showed you. Hope you enjoyed. If you can, by the way, if you want to check out my Twitter, I have been posting quite a lot of information. You can always contact me there if you need help. Uh, what I also have done is I'll be posting there possibly my courses, which I'll be doing on Udemy. If you'd be interested, you can always check it out. I'll be posting as soon as I get stuff done. I'll be posting stuff there also in the comment section. And if you need extra help, as I said, contact me on Twitter. I'll be able to help you out as much as I can. And if you can subscribe to my channel as well, that'd be great. Thank you and see you, see you later, guys.